Hello, this is Noreen Krohn Findlay from KrohnFindlay.com. Here's my website. At my website, you'll find all kinds of uh, my designs, patterns, books, all sorts of inspiration. And uh, you'll be oh so delighted, I hope, and find wonderful things that will make you want to knit, crochet, spin, weave, spoon it, all kinds of wonderful things. Today I'm going to show you how to sew the spoon knitted cord to a woven or knitted or crocheted piece. Um, it, it's, it, you know, you'd think, oh well, just sewing a spoon knitted cord onto something is no big deal, but it can actually be tricky. And there's a lot of different ways that you can um, different styles of stitching that you can use. There's the baseball stitch, which is hands down my most favorite. It is an angled stitch. There's two arms of the stitch, like a V, and the baseball stitch will just disappear. And when you, especially if you use a color of, of yarn that matches your square or your cord really closely, then it's just gone. It vanishes. My least favorite stitch is the ladder stitch. It uh, serpentines and it pulls the cord into a kind of a, well, a, a kind of curvy line rather than having it lie straight. So I never use the ladder stitch. I don't like it at all. The whip stitch is also a favorite of mine and in some circumstances that works beautifully. Your finishing techniques will make all the difference to your, um, your piece. So it's worthwhile learning how to do some uh, different techniques for, for uh, putting things together. When you're sewing your, your cord to your woven, knitted, or crocheted piece, you're going to start by taking your needle into the cord a couple of inches away from where you want to start your stitching, leave a little tail here, take an, uh, one stitch and pinch your tail and pull up against it, then go up to the point where you want to start sewing and pull up gently, then take two stitches in place to secure. So. Hopefully that won't put it out of focus too much. You can see I've done two stitches there to secure my thread. Now I'm going to just stitch, uh, pardon me, put the yarn into the darning needle. Now there's a couple of things I, I want to mention to you and one is um, how to get a really nice sharp corner on your spool knitted cord when you're turning a corner on a woven or knitted or crocheted piece. But we're going to start off doing the baseball stitch. Now I'm my thread is coming from the cord. Oh, by the way, normally the yarn or thread that you use to stitch would be a really nice close match to your woven piece. And I, but I wanted you to be able to see what I was doing, so that's why I'm using the, the vibrant contrast. Okay, so I'm coming from the cord, so I'm going to go over, and there's that first line of the V going into the square. So my next line will, of course, go the second half of the V, and that will take the needle into the spool knitted cord. So I pull up and the stitch is just going to virtually disappear on me. So now I'm coming from the cord into the square. So the next half of the V, then next half of the V. So you can see it really zips along quickly. So we'll come up and out at the corner because now we're going to turn a corner. So I have come out at the square. I'm going to take it across and go all the way through the cord and pull it up. I'm going to give a bit of a tug to snug that up. See with the V, 
baseball stitch, the cord lies very smoothly and snugly in a straight line against the square, which is what you want, which is really nice. Okay, now to make our corner, I'm going to I'm going to stabilize the cord with one finger. I'm going to push back with my other hand to make a sharp corner. Now I'm going to go all the way through the spool knitted cord and come out at an angle, a 45 degree angle. I'm going to stitch back again through, also again at a 45 degree angle, which is what's going to give me that really nicely shaped square corner on the cord. So now I come back through my cord and out of the square and turn and ready to stitch up this side. Okay, so we've done some V stitch. I will show you the ladder stitch, which like I said, I hate. Okay, so we're coming out here. Now with the ladder stitch, you're going to have a step up. So there's our step up. We're going to do a step over and through. So there the needle makes the, the, um, the step on the step ladder. Pull it through. You need to make your next step. So you step up, make your next step over and through. Pull it snug. Now you can see, you can see little flecks of color from the stitch, which again is one of the things that I don't like about the ladder stitch is that it does leave behind there. You can see it leaves behind that telltale stitch of the dreaded ladder stitch. I know some people love it and they're going to say, oh, she's just wrong about that, but that's okay. Everybody has their own choices. And so that's the ladder stitch. Don't like it, don't use it. Okay, now in some cases, your whip stitch works really well. Now, here's the whip stitch. Again, I'm going to hold the cord against the, um, against the square. Now, you're going to take the needle across. Now you can see, there's my whip stitch is the... I'm going to turn it this way so that you can see that it, it's my angled line. And there's my next whip stitch, next whip stitch. But of course what you'd be doing is you will be pulling up tight after each one. But you see the whip stitch isn't always the best choice either. Sometimes it works well depending on what you're doing, but it probably isn't going to be the one that you use for your joining your spool knitted cord because again you do end up seeing it and it does distort the cord slightly. So your best choice is going to be your baseball stitch. So remember we make that V. This uh, cord is using some hand spun cotton which is really dense and it's not cooperating with me. So you think I could have picked a better cord? Probably. Anyhow, well it's good to show things that don't always go perfectly. Keeps us humble. Okay, now one of the other things I want to show you is on the back, because we're working just with the top stitch of the edge, what will happen is along the back of the of the square in the cord you're going to have um, this half of the stitch on the back of the square it's not attached that's not always a problem if you're using this as a wall piece or a piece like um, inside a bag that's going to be lined and the fact that this is not um, caught into the stitching, that might not be a problem. If it's a shawl, you're going to want to go back and stitch along. Now you get a channel, which is actually great if you want to bury your yarn ends. Look at how when you've stitched the first half of the cord on, you can push 
the yarn ends into that channel and then just stitch over them and voila your extra yarn ends at the corners will simply disappear so that's how you stitch a spool knitted cord to a woven square or a crocheted one or a knitted piece so happy spool knitting happy weaving of course happy crocheting happy knitting happy everything yarn and happy everything be well go gently